In this video, we get pushed into a barrier in race A. Race B sees somebody who doesn't want to race anymore. Exit stage right. And in race C, we're already off in the grass. But what on earth actually happened? Hello everyone and welcome back once again to the Gran Turismo Weekly Race Guide here in 2023. Week 43 has combos which we have seen before. Some of them fun, some of them not so fun and a lot of them, or all of them should I say, a little bit carnage if you can count that as a word. Even so, we're going to kick off with race A here as we are in the Samba bus at the Alsace Test Course in reverse. So if you remember this race in the past, there's not much to do here other than put your foot to the floor and off you go. We're actually doing five laps here at the Alsace Test Course in reverse. This is a grid start on Comfort Soft Tires and Bop is on. So just put a nice little delivery on and off you go. Now, some of you will not like this race at all. So if you do want to skip it, there are some timestamps there for you. However, we did not skip this one. We did the race and we've got a lap guide for you as well. An updated one, believe it or not. An updated lap guide. Uh, so let's jump into the race now. Let's have a look exactly what happens is we experience some very dodgy driving. Right, here we are then at the start. I did these races in a bit of a weird order today uh, just because of what was happening in real life. But here we are with race A in the TCR liveried Zamba bus as we get ready. Nice about a quarter throttle there. I kind of figured not hitting the rev limiter might be better here. And it does seem like a pretty good way to start. So if you want to give that a try, there you go. Quarter throttle that way you're just below the limiter bouncing up and down and you actually get a good start as we kick off with this race. Now this race is going to go in double speed essentially in some places. I'll also advance it 500% in some places as well because you don't want to sit here and wait three hours for me to go around turn number one. So we're at 200% here as we go through the left-hander then. You want to keep a nice tight line here for all of this because it's all about averaging miles an hour and distance and because you can't get very many miles an hour it's all about shortening that distance to actually increase that. Heading up towards the hill then. We it down a little bit here. A bit of contact towards the right hand side. We get tapped as well as we go up here. But we do gain two positions. In fact, we're looking to gain another one from Hodgson here. Also a part of TCR as we continue on through there. Right, now in P3, advancing a bit further on here as we get towards this left hander. Going into here then. Triton hits the barrier. Paul hits Triton there. And as we go through here, Paul purposely turns right there, or at least it looks like it, and forces me off the track, which looks very dirty to me, if I do say so myself. So I'm going to lose some speed here as Hodgson retakes that position. We advance a bit further on in the race as we've got... Who's this coming on our inside? I think that's Space Brain on our inside then as we go up here and looking to slow it down. And we're actually going to give them a bit of a bump draft then as we go through the left-hander. And we're up into P3, potentially chicken kicker there, taking a penalty. So I take full advantage of them being ghosted to take that race in line for this left-hander as we go into here then someone dives down the inside here and again not giving much room but i am on here and they keep turning right into me so i'm having to turn left there and unfortunately i get a track limit penalty very frustrating by chicken kicker here because there's no need to turn right there there really is no need so we've had further on here i'm right behind space brain as we leave this corner and then in my head i was like actually it's not going to break for me in terms of penalty it doesn't you just keep going as normal so it's not actually a penalty at all as we look down the inside then of space brain going into this left hander going into here though they lose the rear end there and unfortunately i can't really do much other than break there i was breaking so much and then i started to accelerate when they ghosted couldn't really do much there we're gonna have a look at that in the bloopers though whether it was my fault whether it wasn't my fault and we'll go from there so chicken kicker goes on one side pull on the other the two drivers who i've not been best pleased with in this race so far as we continue on lap number four here and you see there pull on the inside chicken kicker once again they're going at each other like nobody's business as we go on that outside and continue into p3 so we get the inside of pull here as we head towards the hill as we go up here looking to try and get the job done but pull Keeps the line there. Fair play to them as we go through the left-hander and continue on through then. So side-by-side -side action. It's looking a bit better now. Maybe it's a mistake earlier on. I'm not too sure as we go into the left-hander. Once again, we're side-by-side -side here. Paul covers that off. I'm going to go towards that left-hand side. However, Paul's going to start to turn left into me. So just being a very dirty driver, to be honest with you. They're... they're they both are, apparently. Um, I'm not too sure what the hell's going on with these two drivers. Uh, but even so, we're going to try and continue with the race all the same. As we looked on the inside, not going to quite work here. Uh, where's Paul going to go here? So I'm going to go towards that right-hand side. Uh, Paul goes there to defend that and then goes towards left-hand side. So we're going to try and go around the outside of the hill. It doesn't really work too much. And then Chicken Kicker, of course, smashes it into our side. Yeah, just not the greatest race in those two people, really. We'll have a look at the bloopers, of course, but they're the kinds of people you don't want to race and kind of ruin the game for everybody. 
Let's go into the guide then. So it's all about keeping it tight. Tight line is all you need here. And that's what I'm showing you right now. Stay towards the inside lines where appropriate. And also head over towards the right hand side here as you come off there. Because again, this is the shortest way around the circuit. That's what we're planning on doing here. So we keep towards the right hand side. We're going to cut up here. And as you go up here, what I want you to do is as you get to 50 miles an hour, I will then want you to drop down to third gear. And keep your foot planted to the floor. Keep a nice tight line. Don't go too tight. Don't go over the curb because you will get a track limit penalty as we leave the hit now and head down down towards the next corner. This does have a breaking zone. So it does have a breaking marker. And what we're looking for is on the right hand side there. The first arrow. Okay, you want to take a wide line through this corner. If you take a tight line, you're going to drop too much speed. It's all about maintaining speed here. And because it's a tighter corner, you are going to drop some speed. You want to drop as little as possible. So what we're going to do, we're going to hit the brakes and take a wide line through here. And I'm, my goal there is to try and maintain 47. I dropped to 45. You can definitely maintain 47. And then it's to the finish there. And we get a 21-3. Let's jump to race B then. We're at Interlagos in Group 3 Machinery. Now, once again, we have done this combo before. These are all from different weeks, so uh, they weren't combined together. What we're doing here at Interlagos, it's six laps. It's a rolling start on racing hard tyres with the brake balance allowed to be changed. And that's all you really need to know in terms of race B this week. So, Slippy won this one. It's why I went in the Porsche 911. Let's jump to the race. Let's have a look exactly what happens. Right then, here we go. What have people chosen then? Mercedes AMG in P1. I knew they went for that one, to be fair. Huracan, we've got an Audi R8 in there. So very much a mixture. Remember, this used to be the bouncer performance track on GT Sport. So the cars should be very close here. Porsche is a very safe bet, though. I've talked about this in the car profile. So make sure you do check out the car profile for the Porsche or any other car on the channel after this video. Right, through the right-hander we go then here. The Senna S and into the race. Then we've got Mario Sonic also choosing a Porsche repair. The Disney Porsche, in fact, there as we continue on out of here. Line of stern initially then. Everyone's going to get closer and closer and closer in this one. Mario looking down the inside of Manga then as we head in towards left-hander then as we continue on through here. Just get a bit of oversteer here. I go to correct it. I come off the throttle a little bit here. Going to lose out here with dirty tyres. But that isn't going to be the only thing I lose out from here as I start to weave. I get a 0.5 second penalty and you can see my face uh, smiling because it's a bit ridiculous to be honest to get one. We go a lap later then, lap two. Jesse's got one this time. I've taken mine. We're back in this train of cars so we can see what we can do in terms of action. So Jesse's going to go towards that right hand side. This penalty line is in a brutal spot as well, uphill. So you're going to lose a lot, a lot, a lot of time there. A lot more than what you get in terms of a penalty. Lap number three then, Manga runs a little bit wide here through the centre S and we're going to go down the inside of Manga in the Gulf Porsche there. As we head towards the break-in zone. And in we go. Look at the sun shining on my face there. Very sunny morning here in the old Southport then. Through we go and up into P14. As we advance to the end of lap three then. Where we catch up to Lord Deadline. I wonder if he conquers the deadlines or misses them. I'm not too sure. But even so, we're going to go down the inside of Lord Deadline then. And up into P13 we go then. As we've got Disco Stew up ahead. A familiar face in these weekly race, guys. But we're going to defend here from Lord Deadline, first of all. Maybe there's a slight bit of rubbing there between us two. Nothing major, though. Oh, hello. We've got an Audi there. Oh, hello. That did scare me then. Uh, Darius uh, leaving the race. We'll have a look at what happened to Darius a little bit later on. Lap number four, then we catch up to Disco Stew. Disco Stew is back here, boys and girls, as we continue on through the left-hander then. And we are in the slipstream. What can happen here then? The Porsche is quicker than the Aston in a straight line. Once again, you can see that in the car profiles. Down the inside we go of... That's the old Jordan livery, isn't it? I'm pretty sure that's a Jordan livery as we go into the left-hander. Marathonic goes a bit deep here as well. Is this going to be a two-for-one? Yes, it is. Round the outside we go through up into P10. A two-for-one offer. We take those every day of the week. Right, as we continue on there, the German off. 0.5 second penalty as well for the German up ahead as we go into the braking zone. They're going to have dirt on their tyres. I see that. I claim that position. P9, it is for us then with four cars up ahead. So still chance for a good result here, especially after that dodgy penalty on lap one as we continue to the final lap then. We've got Pinhal up ahead. Goes defensive in that RCZ. Essentially a Porsche. It does feel like a Porsche as you drive it. To go through the right hander though they cut a little bit too much of the center s and they're going to be given a 0.5 second penalty here and there we go it does mean they're going to have dirt on their tires as well so they're going to go defensive here i'm surprised they were going to defend this with that penalty because if we slow down enough here they could be caught by jesse behind as we go to the left hander though side by side here cleanly alongside i just get pushed out a little bit there i wasn't too happy with that you see my hand put up there and hello somebody goes towards the right hand side <laughs> Yeah, exit stage right there for that individual. We'll have a look what happened to them because that one was an unusual one. Not seen that before as we go into the technical section here at Interlagos. 
Guiding towards the left we go. It says keep distance, keep distance. Not sure what that's about then on the back of the uh, Pinhal's car. Going to head towards the right-hander. Once again, they're going to go defensive here as we go in to the sharp right-hander. I'm looking to try and get past them and see if we can get in this fight for P5. Oh, they're a bit mostly here then as we go through the left-hander here. Very hard to get this move done. It really is. And Pinhal defends that nicely as we go in towards the last corner. Looking to get a good run out of this corner then and maybe have a chance at P5. Let's see what happens here as Pinhal sticks it towards the left-hand side. We're going to have to go the longer way around here, but we're still in that slipstream, thankfully, as we go up into P7. As we advance towards the end, we're not going to be involved in that fight. But a P7 finish after a bit of a dodgy start. I'll happily take that. I really will indeed. Um, and you can see there, mixture of cars. This was the bop track originally, so potentially, uh, you know, the cars should be very close. In the lap guide then, turn one on the right-hand side. I'm looking for a grey stairwell there, just before the 50 board, just after the 100 board. On the right-hand side, that's where I'm looking. I've talked about it before, but in the race, there are two red canopies on the left-hand side. Just break before the second one. That is also a brake marker. Very nice in the race. It's at the same point on the circuit. So I drop the first gear here, take a nice tight line for the left, and cut a little bit of the right there, and continue on through. Now, if you can grip your tyres on the inside like I do here, it will just rotate you just enough there where you won't understeer wide, and it will mean you should get a very good sector one as we head towards the end of that sector. Now, we're looking on the right-hand side, and what we're looking for here is either the end of the wall, the 100 board, or what I'm using this time, which is the tarmac, which connects with the actual circuit there, and breaking just before I get to that on the right-hand side side uh, and for this one you actually want to make sure you cut a little bit of the inside and don't run too wide on this corner it's very slippy on exit so i take a wider line in cut the inside as much as possible then and continue on out again avoid the slippy stuff on exit and then a nice turning through there and head over towards the left hand side and what we're looking for on the left is that marshall box there on the left hand side that is my brake marker i break just before that hits the edge of your screen uh, and i'm gonna drop to third gear you can drop to second during the corner as well it does allow for a little bit more rotation in the Porsche 911 uh, I'm not sure what I do on this particular lap, but I've done both before and both actually works here as well. So third gear, yeah, I do drop to the second briefly, back up to third, clip both curves there and continue on out wide. What we're looking for here is the monobrow of tyre marks there. That's what I'm calling this from now on. I'm breaking before I get to this. Obviously on softer compounder tyres, I break at it. Hard tyres, braking distances are increased. I break before this and just before it, in fact, and I'm going to drop down to first gear. Now, I actually do this corner slightly wrong on this slide. You see, I get a bit of oversteer there. You can cut the curb a little bit more and I do lose a tenth and a half or so from that as I go through here. Just bouncing the car with the throttle as I continue on out. Be careful, oversteer. It happens very easily on the exit of that corner. As we head towards the final sharp right-hander in the midsection, uh, you can either use the green on the left-hand side or the end of the tarmac on the right-hand side. I was using that on the right-hand side, to be honest with you, more than the left. I started using that a lot more, actually. You want to go out wide and then come back in tight and really try and keep it tight here as you exit. The more to the right you go, the faster you can do this left. Otherwise, you'll have to lift a little bit more. So in most cars, you will have to lift a little bit but you can lift less if you take a wider line in. That's the critical point I want you to take away from this. For the final quarter then, on the right-hand side, you've got a cross in the barriers. You can, oh, sorry, not in the barriers, in the catch fence there on the right-hand side. That is your marker for this final corner. Break at it and break hard. Okay, now just be careful on exit. Once again, this is a corner very, very, very much has power over there on exit. A lot of people have errors there. You'll see a lot of spins there throughout the week as well. And as you see there, we get the job done. We head towards the line now. We're going to get a 131.9 here. Definitely mid 31s possible as we jump to race C then where we're in group two at Lego Majore, the full course but in reverse. So one of my favourite tracks, of course, as you know. What exactly are we doing here then? We are doing 10 laps. It's a rolling start. You have to use the soft and medium compounds of tyre. Times 2 fuel, times 7 tyre wear and the bop is on here. And you can adjust the brake balance, of course. So with the tyre wear being so high, it's going to be like a middle of the road pit strategy here unless you want to try and risk it in terms of a short stop or sorry, stopping a lap earlier. But you're going to have no tyres at the end potentially. Let's jump to the race then. Let's have a look exactly what happens because this one is a bit crazy. Right, what have people picked then? We've got Ni uh, Nissans. I picked the Nissan. We've got Hondas in there. A lot of people picked the Honda. It's what I did the lap guy did in fact, but I was worried about the rear tyres, which is why I chose the Nissan. If you're not subscribed already to the channel, please do subscribe. We're on our journey to 40k and we are so close now. So everyone counts and I appreciate all the support. Right, let's get into this race then because the rolling start is a bit dreadful at this circuit, as we know. And you can see the distances there as we go through the right hander. We'll advance a bit further on. Let's get into the thick of the action then, which is this mid-section on this reverse course of Lego Majore, the full circuit. 
as we go into the left. You really do have to slow down when you're in a pack here because people do this at different speeds. And we've got a slot. Oh, we got a sort of oversteer there. And a tag from the finish driver. We'll have a look at that in the bloopers to see exactly what happens as we go into the left-hander then. Looking down the inside. Is that going to work? Not quite then. Now that we are now in P12. But we've got Mario on our right. We've got Wind coming up on our left. We've got Chicken Angel up ahead with a penalty as well. We're going to be four wide here as we go up here. I was trying to make room for everybody here as we go into the left-hander. But we all managed to survive this, to be fair. Some really good racing here between everybody who was involved in that one. And I'm going to lose out in the end. I dropped back down to P13. But really good stuff there from absolutely everybody as we go into the left-hander then. Clear through here. We're going to see some cars going very slowly up ahead incident between those winds got a bit deep now maybe it was tapped i'm not too sure as we continue on through here back up to p12 we go and back ahead of wind wind must be very frustrated with the fact because uh wind's very quick of course and and then uh, once you stuck behind me then potentially you've got an issue because i'm i'm not like wind speed anymore but i'm close we see somebody going slow there uh, as we go in to the right hander and in towards the braking zone so it's harder for wind to overtake me whereas wind can potentially overtake others much more easy the Irish driver then uh, goes a bit wide there on the exit the first turn. I go down the inside there, leave room on the exit. We're up into P10 as we continue on then towards the end of lap two where Mario Sonic's going down the inside of the finish driver. We need to go into the back of the finish driver there as we continue on through here. So we managed to avoid the, an incident there as we go into the right-hander and head towards the sharp, sharp braking zone. Very good overtaking opportunity in this corner to send it down the inside of people. Just got to be careful next exit though, of course, because it's got one of the most dangerous exits in Gran Turismo with that barrier there. Marathon got very close to it and we look to overtake the finish driver then at Wazer as we go down the inside of them, heading towards turn one. Very hard move to pull off this. I've done it a couple of times. As we go into here then, we stick it on the inside. We keep it there and we do get that position and wind's going to follow through there behind us as we are now into P9. In towards the left we go. What's happening up here? Lots of cars absolutely everywhere as we go into the right hand there, continuing on through. I just get that slight bit wrong there. A bit of understeer caught from the dirty air up ahead and I run on the grass. But fortunately, I do survive this. Wind's going to get an absolute amazing run on me there. Going to go down the inside. I wasn't going to fight this at all really. Uh, and you're going to see me short shift there because I just want to get dirt off my tyres and make the car runnable but wind's got a 1.5 second penalty uh, so wind does take that and we are now back up into P9. Arkies has got a bit deep there. I was planning on coming in on this lap if I'm honest but because Arkies was on that inside I decided to carry on and go for another lap and I think somebody up ahead just hit the barrier slightly there as we go into the left hander here. Lap number 5 then. We've got a Mario car, Super Mario car there. We're going to go on the inside of that car then as we get the job done. Wind is back behind me here as we continue on then towards the left hander and then the fast right as we're going to go through here now we just tag that on the left we're going to go into this right hander but we hit the curb slightly wrong here I'm trying to slow the car down unfortunately wind taps us there uh, as we continue on we managed to survive wind's gone into the barrier there big accident behind then we're going to have a look at that in the bleepers because afterwards and watching it in the bloopers because i have seen it i don't think it was wind's fault if i'm honest with you but wind was waiting up for me there so fair play to you but we'll have a look at that in the bloopers in a bit more detail but yeah i was struggling through there they clipped the curb slightly just forced me to get a bit of understeer there it wasn't the greatest in the world so the finish driver goes back through then into P6. We go a bit deep here, still struggling with dirt on our tyres and downforce issues. That damage has just repaired itself as we go into the right-hander and Hodgson's caught us back up as well after that slide earlier on. We come into the pits on lap five. We leave uh, starting on lap number six, of course we do. We've got Chicken Angel there, uh, who we're now going to have a fight with as we continue on through there. So we're on the softer compound attire now. You're choosing to use it in the second half of the race as we head into the braking zone here. Oh, nearly to the back of the finish drive once again. Chicken Angel looking on my inside. And as I did here, Chicken Angel went alongside, but did manage to get alongside before I got to the corner there. So maybe I ran them a bit too tight there. Uh, looking back at this now, I do apologise for that at the time. I thought I was fine there as we continue on there. And we're looking to try and catch up to this finish driver as we go into the midsection here. And you're going to see how people do this very differently. So I caught a lot there. I've had to really slow it down. And this is where a lot of your crashes are going to happen here because people do these corners very, very differently. And it's all about maintaining speed to be honest to do those effectively. And you are going to see crashes there where people just get it slightly wrong. And different tyre compounds as well because it does really matter there with the softer and harder compound. Right, we're heading in towards the left-hander then. We send it down the inside. Do we get this done? That is the question. We do indeed just... Oh, they're still there. Those who go into the 
right, we do get it done in the end. So back up to P9 we go as we've got the German Morlock up ahead who goes very deep into the hairpin there. Very deep indeed. And we've got somebody in the pits as well. So they're choosing to pit a lap later. If you do struggle with tyre wear, it may be worthwhile pitting that lap later and just to be on the safer side. You get a good run on Morlock here, although it's not a place to go for the O-take. However, they just leave a gap there, so I went for it. But then, unfortunately, the, I hit the sausage and as they came closer to try and avoid them. But I think that was more just a, a racing thing. I don't think it's an incident, to be honest with you, because we both survived the corner. Just a bit of a bizarre one, if I'm honest. Uh, you see me there shaking my head because I was a bit confused with all of that because I thought there was a gap there. There was a gap there. Went into it. Went tighter. Sausage. Yeah, all a bit weird, to be honest with you. We've got Arky's then heading towards Banky Boy. Arky's breaks a bit early here. So I try around the outside here. A slight tap. Nothing major there with Arky's as we continue on out in P6. Uh, so we've got somebody coming out the pits there. No, they're not, actually. It's Mario Sonic. He's had an incident at the famous corner, which we are going to have a look at the bloopers. Mario just sticks towards the right side there. So we're going to go up into P5. I mean, after all the action that we've been involved with, we're up into... Oh, no, scratch that. We're up into P4. There's something squeezy is going a bit slow there as we go into the left-hander. No idea what's going on in this race. Absolute crazy race, this one. It really was. My tyre wear... Well, I didn't put the brake valves to the rear, unfortunately. So my tyre wear for this last lap is going to be a bit dreadful. And Mario Sonic's catching up to me very quickly indeed. But it looks like that NSX is the go-to car over the Nissan GTR as we continue on out of here. Just struggling on left-handers with the front tire wear, the front right tire wear completely gone at this moment in time. Mario's going to look down that inside, which is fair enough here, and I'm not going to fight this too much. I was going to try and keep it there a little bit, but I knew it wouldn't really handle it. So we pull in behind Mario or something. We've just got to try and survive till the end and then keep this P5 as we go into the left and then the right-hander here. Looking to slow it down and continue on out. Well, we do survive until the end. We do come home in P5, which after that race, you can see my face there. I was just like, oh my word. What a race that was. And you see the NSX definitely is the car to go to there. All NSX is with a Nissan GTR. Flat bang in the middle. Let's talk to you about a lap guide then. To head towards turn one. This is all about how, where you break. Okay, so we've got the white line there. The second one that comes across the track. Or we've got the orange curb on the left-hand side. You're trying to break in between these, okay? And you're going to drop to third gear. You can do it in fourth, but third gear is definitely much better here. So what you're going to do, drop a gear, then drop again. And what that's going to allow is the car to rotate there. And up into fourth very quickly to try and maintain that speed through the corner. Right, as we head towards the double left-hander, we go towards the right-hander. And at the end of the curb, you're going to break in a straight line. And then you're going to trail break a little bit into the corner and get your tyre on the inside of the curb on the left-hander part of this corner, okay? That's going to allow you to rotate a little bit. You are going to want a bit of rotation here as we go into this corner because that will mean you can follow through very quickly. And that's what I'm trying to do here. I don't manage to get my tyre on the inside. You know, to have to lift a little bit there to avoid running too wide. If I did get my tyre on the inside, I would have been fine. This next left-hander then, we've got the double curb going to single curb. You need to make sure you're braking before you get to that, okay? Slight bit of braking, turn in, and then you should be able to use a lot of the curb and a bit more on the inside, if I'm honest here. You can use quite a lot of that inside curb. Continue on out of there and head towards the end of sector one, and you should be fine and dandy. Now, turn in at the end of the curb down the right side. So we go through here. This is all flat, nice and easy, which is why I thought I was going to make it in the race, which is why the race was a bit weird, to be honest with you. And as we head towards Banky Boy, where the sand comes away from that yellow there and has the grass, that interconnecting bit there that I've highlighted, that is your brake marker for Banky Boy. Now, Banky Boy is all about the exit here, okay? Not the entrance. The entrance matters to get the exit, but it's more about carrying speed on the exit. So notice I'm accelerating very early here because I'm on the inside of Banky Boy, not on the sausage bit of Banky Boy, but on the curb in enough where I can accelerate out and the camber will help me. Keep that in mind for that corner. Lots of time to be gained from getting that right. Right, heading down here then. This is flat, nice and easy to go into the left part and into the right here. And what we're going to be looking for now is... If you want to use this, I don't use this. The end of the curb on the left-hand side that I've highlighted there. Very good brake marker. You see, I've just hit the brakes now. Uh, and essentially, what you want to do for this next section, you want to go from fifth gear for the first one, fourth for the second one, third for the second one. Keep that in mind as you do this, okay? So fifth gear for the first one. And as we come into it, down the brakes, fourth, and then down the brakes into third gear. And as we go through here, I can maintain that speed. I can actually do that one a little bit quicker. Heading down here then, we're going to be looking on the left-hand side for the end of that white curb in there. We're going to break just after that leaves the edge of your screen. You're going to go out wide and then come back in and you're going to want to accelerate extremely early. Once again, the exit for this corner is very critical, very, very critical rather than the entrance. Obviously, you need the entrance to get the exit, but it's all about the speed I'm talking about here. So you want to accelerate as early as possible. The car will grip, the course will tighten. So you just have to be careful on exit. It does tighten to keep that steering going as you continue on towards this next left-hander. 
We're going to be casting our eye to the right hand side where that red marker begins that I've highlighted there. You break just after that leaves the edge of your screen on the right hand side. You can't see the apex. You can't see the corner. It's definitely there and you want to make sure you keep a tight line for this next corner. Okay, so we're going to hit the brakes as I mentioned there as we go into here. Don't go over the sausage there and continue on out. We get a bit of oversteer there as we go into the right hander and through we go and we're going to head towards the penultimate corner here. On the left hand side, we've got the orange barrier ish there on the left. That is going to be your brake marker. Okay, you're braking just before that hits your geo screen uh, as we go into this. Once again, be careful power oversteer in some of the slower corners now because the downforce isn't in play. We're going to experience it on this corner as well as we go in. Keep it tight. You want a nice, nice wide line for the last corner. As we go towards the right hander, I short shift a little bit, clip the curb and avoid the barrier on the exit there. Head towards the line and see what lap time you will get. This one is a 145.1. That is it in terms of track, guys. Let's have a quick look at the bloopers then. So here's lap one in the Samba bus. You see the contact there. There's an overlap between those two. And then we just get tagged there. Nothing major that we could do there. As we're now going to overtake Hodgson. So we advance to the last corner, essentially. So we see uh, Paul here clip the French driver. But look at this. Opens the steering completely. Just forces me onto the grass. Seems very dirty. Could have been a mistake. Could have been until later on of course so this is the incident that i was involved in you can see they lose the sample bus there i'm trying to slow the car down i wasn't touching the throttle until he was ghosted at that point and then continue on through they did lose it on the rear end look at it from my perspective here i'm on the brakes on the brakes on the brakes just rolling through hit the brakes again hit the brakes again trying to avoid them how much could i have done should i have waited up there i'm not too sure to be honest with you because they did lose it as they went into the corner i'm not i'm not sure on that one now look at Paul here. I'm going to turn left into me here, which is a very bizarre move, to be honest with you, and just completely dirty driving, to be honest with you. Paul, you are one of the reasons why this game gets ruined sometimes with the daily races, as you do dodgy things like that. Again, here is Chicken Kicker, uh, otherwise known as Onion Bargy, apparently their nickname, also going into me. Right, okay, let's jump into race B then, and let's have a look at Darius as we go into this left-hander site. A couple of taps here. They're just going to veer off here, and they're just going to quit the race. A bit bizarre, to be honest with you. Well, look here. Uh, this is where Pinhal just ran me wide a little bit here on the throttle. And I, I think they tried to give me space. It was just a bit awkward. And then this was the French driver. Just clips the grass on the left-hand side and sent them off. I haven't seen that before, I don't think. Or it might have been a while ago anyway. It's a very unusual maneuver here. So going through this right-hander then. Hodgson loses the rear end and unfortunately gets tapped then by the NSX. Uh, but again, it's one of those. They'd already lost the car. It's, it's a hard run, isn't it, when they've already lost the car? Good to hear. Sparks just gets it all sorts of wrong. Straight into the Irishman. Uh, they'd already pointed the card, started breaking that point, so I could see why they struggled to avoid them. But they did wait up. You know, fair play with the sportsmanship there. They did wait up. We're through here, though. This is where wind lifts a little bit there. Wind was actually going to make the corner. Uh, unfortunately, I wasn't there, so I don't believe you needed to wait there, wind, if I'm honest. Uh, I feel like, you know, that was more my error, and I know you hit me from behind, and you could argue it's always the responsibility from the car behind, but... I think, to be honest with you, that was both more of my issue clipping the curb and then trying to survive it, really. So, yeah, I don't think that's on you. Going through here, you can see there the sausage and the issue it caused. So, it sort of put us back side by side. So, I think that was fine in the grand scheme of it. Just a bit of a weird moment there. And uh, that is it in terms of this video, folks. If you did like it, give it a like. Subscribe to the channel to stay in touch with all the latest content. As always, any constructive feedback, do let me know in the comments. And your opinions on some of those incidents as well. It's always welcome. I'll say a big thank you for watching and I hope to see you in another video or live stream again very soon.